Rub up your engines! Well, here we go again, the government giving our taxpayer money to corporations. Now, in Michigan, Michigan economic officers, government officers, are raising questions at Ford because now they're demanding another 750 million bucks for building battery plants for electric cars in Michigan. Now, they've already approved a $200 million grant to Ford for this battery plant in Michigan and a 15-year tax abatement for making this battery factory in Michigan. And that abatement, they figure, is worth $772 million. In other words, they don't have to pay taxes. We got to pay our taxes, give the money to Ford, but they don't have to pay any taxes, right, for 15 years. And another $36 million to prepare the site for building the factory. This is unbelievable. Our taxpayer money is just going to these companies, right, to prepare the land. Hey, isn't that kind of their job? They're making a factory, right? But now they say they need $750 million more and they're asking for it. And here's what they say. You can't believe this stuff. I mean, it's, it's comical, right? Here's what they say. Not a dime of this $750 million will go to Ford, said Mr. Messer. Instead, it will prepare infrastructure at the Marshall site. <laughs> well, preparing the infrastructure. They got all this other money. Now they need $750 million more to prepare the infrastructure of our taxpayer dollars. You know, it's unbelievable how it got to this level. These corporations are getting our taxpayer money to do their own business. And then they got rid of got all the money. Well, we need $750 million more, you know. All this baloney about electric stuff stuff is going to work and it's going to be cost effective. Look, they're already taking the money from us and then they want $750 million more. And what do they say to the people of Michigan? Well, if you don't do this, you know, we're not going to build it. You won't get any jobs here. So they're putting the flame to their feet to try to get them to move, to give them even more money, $750 million more. It's unbelievable the collusion these companies have with our money that we pay to the government. Alex says, Scotty, I bought a Honda Civic 2.0. Is it reliable? They're pretty reliable. The two liter engines in Honda are probably one of the best engines they ever made. They really made good two liter engines, right? Honda makes great engines anyways, but I'm not a fan of, you know, 1.4, 1.5 liter turbo little engines. They blow up, but the two liter engines are much stronger engines. They don't need a turbo on them to get enough acceleration. So I like long life out of my machines. Hey, let's face it. We're not driving race cars. We're driving transportation devices. You get something that can last three, four, five 500,000 miles. Why would you want to replace it with a smaller engine with a turbo that's got more horsepower? but it's going to wear out faster. It doesn't make any sense to me. Me, E says, I'm spending 20 grand on a vehicle soon. Should I get a used Camry or a new Nissan Versa? You value your money, get a used Camry, you know? The Versas are junk wagons. Ever since Renault took over, Nissan, they've been going downhill. Now it's Renault, Nissan, Mitsubishi are merging, then they're coming apart, and then they're reinvesting in electric vehicles of both of them. No, get the Camry, believe me. Now it's used, so you got to get a guy like me to check it out. You can't trust any anybody. The other day, I want my grandson to look at a Toyota Tundra. Great pickup trucks, right? I said, don't buy this thing. It has had five owners already, and it's only 11 years old. And in one year, it was sold three times. Then I put my scan tool and had all these pending transmission codes. You got to check it out, regardless of the vehicle. You got to check it out before it buy when you're buying used. But you find a good used camera. Yeah, that's what you want. Cert League says, Scotty, I smell gas in my oil. Nissan Frontier, 2,460,000 miles. You smell gas in your oil. That's oil dilution. Your oil's diluted with gas First thing you want to do is check all the spark plugs. They should be kind of grayish colored, whitish colored. If you see one of them or more are black, you probably got leaking fuel injectors and you might want to first clean them. That might help and then replace them if that is the case that they're leaking. You also want to check the fuel pressure regulator. If that's broken, it can dram too much fuel into the oil system. I'd start there because you don't want to have oil dilution. That ends up ruining the engine, ruins the catalytic converter. You know, if you're talking about something with 160,000 miles, you're not really going to rebuild the engine and stuff like that, it'll cost too much money. So find the root cause and pray it's not the head gasket starting to blow because if it's starting to blow, you'll get fuel and oil mix and then you got to rebuild the engine and something like that's probably not worth rebuilding. George Strobel says, Scotty, why do you think Toyota doesn't make a bigger 2,500, 3,500 truck? Thanks. Toyota doesn't make that much money making their big giant trucks. That's not their game. They're really not competing against GM, Ford, and Ram trucks. Ford sells so many more trucks than Toyota does the big trucks. Toyota's bigger seller is their Tacomas, which used to be a small truck, and now it's a mid-sized truck. And that's more their game plan. They're not into big, giant trucks. I mean, look at Toyota. They're proving it because their Tundras now are now only available with a V6 engine. They scrap the V8 in them, so they're going the opposite direction. They'll never make a big one. It's not their forte. That's not something that they've been 
into. It wasn't until just a few decades ago that he made V8 trucks. I started making them in the old forklift factory in Indiana. I saw the first ones in Houston when they had a show. They invited me. I looked at them. I said, oh, Toyota's making a V8 truck. I bet they sell them. And they sell them, but they're not competing against all the big three in the United States because that's not their ball game. Mr. Zunderan says, in your opinion, which state has the worst drivers? Oh my God, there's so many bad drivers. It is hard to say. I have to say the most obnoxious drivers are Massachusetts. Around there, people call them mass hole drivers. <laughs> they will climb up your butt on the highway, get an inch from your bumper, and then if you finally get out of the way, it doesn't matter if you do an 80 in a 60 zone, they'll get out of my way, here I come. And then somebody will climb up their rear end doing 100, wanting to get by them. I have to say, they're the worst drivers I've probably ever seen in terms of being ob noxious. I, I do have to say, you know, any big city, people are pretty wild drivers, you know. Hey, they're pretty wild in Chicago. I lived in Toronto. They're pretty wild drivers in Toronto, too. Zooming around. Everybody's in a hurry in a city because they got all that pressure on it. Pressure. Get here. Get here. Blah, blah, blah. They are just kind of wild. We're out in the country. Eh, the people are more laid back and they're not as insane. I got to say, but any place where it's concentrated with people, people drive crazy. I'm in Clarksville and you might think, oh, Clarksville, you know, hick little place. It's not hick. It's a lot of people live there. Hundreds of thousands of people live here, right? So in Clarksville, people drive like maniacs. But you get out in the country, we're only six miles from the Kentucky border. It's nice driving out in the country. People aren't crazy. The more people are concentrated, generally, the worse they drive. Yark says, my 2010 Subaru Impreza smells exhaust fumes when the air is on. You're turning the air on, that's sucking air in your vents under the windshield. That means something is going wrong under the hood. Open the hood of your car. Find where the leak is. Now, you got to look for two kinds of leaks. If you have, say, valve cover oil leak, it will leak and it will drip on the exhaust and smolder and you'll smell that. Check that. That's a cheap, easy fix. The other thing would be some leak in your exhaust system, but if you got a leak in your exhaust system and you're smelling exhaust fumes that way, you're going to hear it too because the mufflers are further back and if you have a leak in the front before the muffler, pop, 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 you're going to hear the noise. Now, if you have a leak after the muffler, you won't hear anything, but the muffler is way in the back. So, if it's an exhaust leak, you'll hear noise and you'll be able to hear it and pinpoint where it is. If you don't, it's probably oil dripping on the exhaust, something and dripping on the exhaust and then smoldering and you smell it. I venture says, Scotty, how you doing? What's your opinion on Bando drive belts, fan belts for Honda Odyssey? Bandos, it's a decent company, you know, they've been around quite some time, but I mean, me, I go for what's best and most convenient. I go to the auto parts stores around wherever I am and I'll say, you got any Gates belts? Gates makes pretty good belts. I just put Gates belts. My Toyotas, Lexus, they all got Gates belts on them. My old Toyota Celica has Gates belts on it. I haven't had any problems with them. So, you know, you got something that works. Why not? The Bandos, there's nothing wrong. They're not terrible ones, but I like the Gates. I've never had one break on me. I just, when they get old and cracked, I put new ones on. Well, you might not believe this, but car crashes in the United States cost $340 billion dollars per year to get the repairs done. And on average, it costs the average American $1,035 per year, even though you're not in the wreck. Here is the problem. An average of 23 million vehicles are in wrecks, right? But it turns out that two thirds of this cost is paid for guys like you and me, if you're like me and a good driver, who never get in wrecks. They just raise the insurance rates to make us pay for what other people are screwing up on. And it's bad enough that the cost to repair them is $340 billion. Now, this is in 2019. That's last year they have data for it. But an additional $261 billion is lost due to job, time loss, towing, everything else that's involved with the wrecks. Learn how to drive. Don't use your cell phone when you're driving tweeting, whatever, looking at videos. Interesting enough, only 12% of the accidents are on the highway, 53% are at intersections. 53%. So when you come to that intersection, take heed of the signs. If you're sitting there and it's starting to turn green from red on the other side, don't step on the gas like a maniac. Look both ways. I was almost flattened in Houston once, turned green instead of stepping on the gas. I looked, here comes a guy three seconds later flying through the red light. Probably would have killed me, right? The most dangerous place is in intersections. 53% of the accidents occur at the intersections. Some people don't even know what the law is. So learn about this stuff. Don't get caught in an intersection where 53% of the wrecks occur. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.